Thanks for coming. Uh, my name is Helmut Lovic. I'm professor for computer science at the University of Vienna. And today I want to reflect on six years of learning and teaching the Vulkan API for computer science students at the university level with examples for video extensions. Now, the University of Vienna is fairly old. It was founded in the 14th century, roughly 10,000 people staff and 84,000 uh, students. Uh, we our academic year is split into two semesters, which last each of them four months. So this is the time we have for, for a lecture uh, to convey all the, all the information. Uh, in our case, it's teaching Vulcan or other stuff. Uh, so we have four months roughly for, for each of these topics. Uh, we offer various programs at the bachelor, master and PhD level. And at the bachelor level, it's uh, German speaking. So we have a German language. Uh, and at the master level, it's English speaking. So in the if, if in the German language, uh, mostly students are from Austria and Germany, but in the English uh, programs, we have uh, we are very international. We have students from all over the world, from Eastern Europe, uh, also from the United States. Um, we have lots of Erasmus exchange students. So this is a more heterogeneous environment than, and, you, and students come from very different ways. Now, the courses that we offer that are related to the Vulcan API can be done at the bachelor level and at the master level. All of them are electives, so they are not mandatory in the program. You can vote, you can elect them for your study. Uh, they are in these clusters. We have nine clusters and you can go into a cluster and select one of these electives. The course that is actually really focused on the Vulcan API is called Real-Time Computer Graphics. I'm going into de more detail later on. And there are other courses that make use of uh, the Vienna Vulcan engine, which is a game engine based on, on Vulcan. Uh, gaming technologies is about physics simulation and um, AI for computer games. And cloud gaming is about networking, game streaming, video encoding uh, for computer games. Uh, these courses have a very similar structure. Uh, these courses have a lecture part where uh, I give a lecture with slides, a very traditional lecture. And then in parallel, there is a lab part where we hand out assignments for the students and they are supposed to solve the assignments at home wherever they want. A lot of programming is done here. And what is maybe more special about is uh, at the end of each of these courses, each student is supposed to create their own game. So. You have three to four weeks and come up with your own game, either using, for instance, the Vulcan tutorial or the Vulcan engine for, for your game. So this is the, the outcome of, the, of each of these courses. Now, um, concerning real-time computer graphics, uh, there is a prerequisite. You have to do first foundations of computer graphics. So before we go into the specifics of an API, this is more like the, the theory of, of computer graphics it's more ray tracing. It's not um, not glued to a particular API. Um, and once you have done the theory, then you can go into real-time computer graphics, which is focused on Vulkan, or real-time ray tracing, for instance, where we use uh, OpenGL. Now let's go into uh, the lecture real-time computer graphics. This lecture is really focused on the Vulkan API. Uh, as I said uh, before, that you should have some grasp on, on theory of computer graphics. Um, but because we have these heterogeneous students coming from all over the place, um, what I do is I start with a couple of primers on C++, for instance, because this is really the basis of what we do, and also on mathematics, more general mathematics, linear algebra and stuff like that, and also then uh, more specific for, uh, for real-time uh, computer graphics. And then we have this large block of learning the Vulkan API. Uh, each of these lectures last 90 minutes, and you can see the topics that are taught, um, all the relevant uh, Vulkan objects, obviously, what they're for, how you can use them, how you can create them, uh, what functions you to use, which parameters are relevant, and so on. Now, um, going through this, at the end, we also do a GLSL, so learning the, the shader language. And once you know the shader language, then you can go into more creating your own shaders and then students can learn how to implement some PRDF, phone shading, uh, physically based shading and so on. And finally, we do some shadow mapping, for instance. 
So this is the lecture part. It's roughly 580 slides in total. And all of the lectures are actually recorded and students can later on um, download them from our um, Moodle platform. A lecture looks roughly like this. So these are some slides. Uh, I present what objects are there, how to create them, the functions, the function call uh, parameters, return values, uh, the structs that you have to put in the create infos and so on. So it's really going into, in, into the details um, and students really have to understand not only the objects and what they're for, but how to create them and how to destroy them. Um, I think what is also very important is once I'm through with a specific topic, like here, the creating the surfaces, what I do is I fire up my IDE and then run the debugger on the Vulkan tutorial, because the Vulkan tutorial in this lecture is actually the goal, understand the Vulkan tutorial. And then I debug through the Vulkan tutorial and show them, okay, here at this specific point, we create the surface, uh, or at this specific point, we create um, a device and so on. And so students can really follow uh, the timing and, and can see when is this when is this created and what are the values that that are delivered back. Now, as I said, uh, in uh, in parallel there is a lab, uh, and um, in usually we hand out assignments. So, like every week or every other week, uh, students get a new assignment and they are supposed to solve them. And here we have a couple of uh, assignments that were used in the last um, um, real-time computer graphics lecture. So we start with a very, very simple task, but then of course we go right in and, and hand out more, much more sophisticated ta tasks uh, like um, creating, uh, enumerating physical devices, creating a swap chain and things like that. And last but not least, uh, the last three to four weeks are reserved to creating their own game. So students really have now the time to churn out code and create a game that is fun, that is playable, uh, and that has some kind of a nice and innovative um, idea behind it. Here is a sample assignment, uh, task for memory buffers and images. Uh, here we have four sub points, and this would be like a sample assignment. I'll go into the Balkan tutorial code, um, and change it, don't use this uh, command draw index anymore, just change it to some other command, which means that we have to change uh, the buffers and so on. So uh, students are then supposed to do this, change the Vulkan tutorial and show that it actually works. I mentioned the other uh, Vulkan related courses, gaming technologies here, uh, which is more on physics simulation and AI for computer games and also coming up with a game at the end. And cloud gaming, which is more on game streaming, uh, networking aspects, controlling your uh, real-time uh, video feeds. Um, and both are actually using the Vienna Vulkan engine, which is my engine that I created like uh, five or five years ago uh, to support all these lectures and, and give students also kind of a, a framework. Now, the Vienna Vulkan engine is a C++ rendering framework it runs out of the box on Windows and Linux. Of course, porting it to Mac has always been an issue. Um, and of course, it uses a couple of, of uh, libraries that you're supposed to use in such a, in such a project. Uh, it um, implements shadow maps and has a thread pool. And it's very easy to, to put your game on top of that by just providing it with these event listens. It's uh, completely open source. You can have a look at it. It's not overly complicated, and it shouldn't be, and it's also not uh, feature complete because it's more like a sandbox where students can actually uh, um, understand how it works, contribute there, um, and also create some games. Now here are a couple of examples of the games that have been created last semesters, um, and they have been quite interesting so, and, and quite fun to play. Here um, we have a physics-based game, here we have a kind of a zombie game. Uh, in this game uh, you are you're a, a duck actually, and you want to find uh, here get out of the labyrinth. And what you can do as a duck, of obviously you can lay an egg. And when the egg explodes, it will send out fragments and kill all the enemies and blast away some of the crates so you can get out. And then it, it uh, restarts. So this was a, quite a fun game, actually. Ah, OK, so here, this is another game where you're chased by these cubes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there, there's no real purpose behind it. So there's, there's no, yeah, 
<laughs> Don't take it uh, literally. <laughs> okay, I also mentioned that um, people do a bachelor and master's program, so you're supposed to do a thesis afterwards. Um, and here are a couple of, of uh, examples of such a thesis. Uh, this was a bachelor thesis uh, um, by a student of mine that, uh, that was um, finished in 2023. Uh, and the idea behind it is actually that um, sometimes you maybe, especially as a, a novice, you don't want to churn out all this boilerplate code for your Vulkan uh, specific renderer. So what we came up with is this graphical user interface where you can actually click your Vulkan renderer together. Um, you, you can click um, whatever you want, load a model, uh, display the model, create pipelines, edit the pipe, add pipelines, um, edit the pipelines um, and delete pipelines. You can, you can save it in a, in a file and then you can click on generate and then it would create a C++ header file uh, that specifically encodes uh, as for your Vulkan renderer, what has been selected here, and then you can include it and run it uh, and, and use it in your game. This is another thesis. It's a master's thesis, actually. This was completed in uh, 2022. Uh, and this student used the Vienna Vulkan engine, which is more like looking like a Frankenstein monster now because everybody's putting their stuff into it. Um, and uh, this student actually in, um, implemented three more renderers, a deferred renderer and two ray tracing renderers, and then had a look at the performance and, and the efforts and stability and things like that. So um, concluding my part of the talk, uh, what are the lessons learned in six years wrestling the API? From the teacher's perspective, um, of course, getting into the I was a massive amount of work, learning the API and also creating the, the engine. The engine was really a good effort. It was a good investment of my time because I now can really use it in, in many places at various lectures and also students can use it to, to get to know more into, into um, uh, the Vulkan API. Uh, recording the lectures also pays off in the long run. Um, it's important to bring all the students to the same level so that there is nobody left behind. Um, one aspect that has always been a problem is, of course, the huge amount of content, all or nothing. You can just leave out stuff from the Vulkan API. And um, as a consequence, of course, this, the API content will, will push away other content that you might also want to, to, to bring in the lecture. What about uh, shade mapping shadows, um, ambient occlusion, what, what not? But um, it turns out that, yeah, it's all or nothing. You have to, you have to sacrifice some stuff uh, to make Vulcan actually happening. And of course, there are some questions I'm still not sure about. Uh, should I use the C interface, C++ bindings? Um, should I include stuff like queries because they're not really used uh, or, or necessary? Uh, in, in, in it's, they can be useful. Um, now with 1.3, um, should I still teach render passes or is it that this dynamic uh, rendering um, just this use this and, and forget about render passes. So questions are still there. And uh, my, ex my observations from the students are uh, that there is great um, interest in games related courses. Um, international students are quite heterogeneous, specifically with respect to what they know in mathematics and C++. Lots of people coming from these are really, really good programmers actually. Um, having a Moodle forum is really good, so students can help each other, That's, that really pays off. Um, and I can say that once uh, students are done with the, with the course, they know the API, so they, they can use uh, the API, they know how the tutorial works, and then they can, they can add um, on, on top of that. And of course, um, having these games being produced is quite fun, it's very motivating. Uh, and also presenting the games at the end. So you see 20, 25 games presented. Uh, it's a lot of fun and very surprising. And with that, I hand over to my co-presenter. Hello, <clears throat> my name is uh, Bernhard Schenk. I'm a student at the University of Vienna. Um, um, sorry, no. Um, I'm a student at the University of Vienna. I started with my bachelor in 2018, um, quite late for my age, but I thought uh, better late than never. Uh, so, uh, and I 
found out about these computer graphics courses and uh, it sounded interesting and so I joined uh, the foundations of computer graphics, did my first ray tracer, uh, learned the math and then immediately uh, the next course is, is uh, Vulkan API uh, and everything else uh, the same. Um, so I am at the moment at point six to seven. So I did my, my lab courses, uh, where I investigated into the uh, Vulkan video extensions. Uh, and I'm now going to my master thesis in the next semester. Um, so what wa was my experience as a student? Uh, first, you learn a, a good mathematical base, uh, which was really important um, for that. Um, and then you immediately jump into state-of-the-art technology. With the uh, Vulkan API, you don't go legacy stuff, you immediately do that. Uh, it was a really steep learning curve. So doing uh, Vulkan in, in four months um, from nothing, at least I have been a programmer for a long time before already, so I did not need to learn C++. Um, uh, but it was hard. But uh, with these small uh, tasks, uh, explaining you uh, every area of the, or the, the important areas of the Vulkan API, because it's by far not every area, um, was was a good guide. And uh, Having a game at every uh, at the end of every course is really a good idea. Um, and what I found is, uh, yeah, as you see this uh, uh, from my my games, uh, I'm not really a designer, but uh, I love to write code and working on game engines. And so I found also my inspiration for for where I should go for my master thesis um, in the cloud gaming course. Um, the cloud gaming course uh, is. Um, um, a course where you uh, have to develop uh, with small tasks over the semester and at the end uh, your final game. A game which runs on a server, headless, uh, and um, a client which uh, shows everything. You have to uh, transfer the input back to the server. It is an easy approach. Uh, you grab every picture from the, from the GPU to host memory, encode it with FFmpeg and send it to the client. Uh, and I thought, yeah, there must be a better way. Um, and so I checked it out. Uh, the game engine, the Vulkan, uh, the Vienna Vulkan engine is Vulkan based. Uh, and so I checked it out and there, I saw there's this, uh, these Vulkan video extensions with the encoding upcoming. This was about one year ago. Um, and said, okay, I will do that. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if this was the best idea one year ago, but so what was my starting point? Uh, I had the provision specifications. Um, there is a from NVIDIA and better driver, um, which can encode. Uh, my luck, I had an NVIDIA card. Um, I did not find the possibility to have a validation layer for video encode. Um, I'm not sure if there was some in development, but yeah, I, I did not find it. And this was really hard to do that without the validation layer. Um, and I found one sample, um, which could encode from a YCBRCR uh, raw data file. It did interframes. I wanted a bit more. I wanted at least P frames. Um, and it worked with one specific revision uh, of the driver. Um, yeah, so it listed also on the GitHub page, uh, it has uh, missing support for P-frames. V-frames uh, were not uh, so my important part because I wanted low latency. Uh, and I wanted encoding from graphical applications, uh, which was also missing here. Um, so what did I do? There were many ups and downs in this uh, progress implementing video encode. Uh, ex extracted from that example the relevant code because this example is yeah has, has libraries and and stuff linked. I uh, it did, took some time till I had the first working extracted code uh, version. It took even longer to get uh, p frames into that because these reference picture lists were were horrible, um, and but. 
it worked. Um, I even did a, a pull request and uh, had some chat messages with uh, Tony. Um, I can remember they were quite motivating because I was on the right track. Um, and um, another problem with every driver update and every specification update, the code stopped working. Um, not only because I had to uh, 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 change my code for the new specification changes, uh, which was a moving target somehow, uh, but on the other side, I had so many bugs in the code I did not know about that it just were running by luck. Um, and yeah, so um, what did I do? Um, I, I had for every driver update to, to fix bugs, which I did not know about that they exist because it were running before. So, and even after the SDK was finally released uh, some weeks ago, uh, uh, and the validation layer was enabled, uh, I found so many bugs and I do not know why it were running at all. <laughs> But I think I fixed uh, now, so the validation layer does not show any uh, error at the moment, so I'm quite happy. Um, for the next time, what should I change when I do something like that? I should really get in contact with the people involved in that, because uh, yeah, doing that on your own is, is hard. Um, and what I also found are these proposal documents. Um, I don't know if they existed one year ago, but uh, they are now linked in this new docu system and they are nice. They have explanations, they have small snippets of examples, so a, a hint, look into them. So, and technically, I also learned much about Vulkan, uh, which is going beyond uh, the courses. Uh, synchronization on a level, yeah, you need multiple queues for uh, video encoding. Um, all this with the different image layouts was not uh, in the courses, of course, because you don't need it for simple render pass. Um, and what I did not expect that I have to learn all the details about this H.264 standard. Uh, I thought, yeah, I just put the, uh, the image there and I get a string back, but yeah. Um, uh, and uh, I found this NVIDIA Insight System tool uh, really helpful. Uh, it helped me a lot to find the synchronization stuff and why something is stalling and all that stuff. Uh, and finally, what is the outcome of all that? Um, Besides that I learned much about uh, Vulkan. Um, this Vulkan, Vulkan video is now integrated in the Vienna Vulkan engine. Um, you can use, the decoding is there, you can use uh, H.264. I only did H.264, I'm not yet into H.265 or uh, any other codec, but uh, I will check that out. Uh, so you can use H.264 files as textures uh, on any object. As you can see in, in this uh, screenshot, uh, this background is a video, and of course that is a video. Um, I did not know that I can show videos, so this is not animated. Um, um, and on the other side, you can get the complete rendered output of the game engine um, as H264 uh, stream. Uh, you have INP frames there. And all that, the video encoding extension and the decode extensions, uh, are each one uh, one CPP file. So it's simple to read, I assume. No one did that yet, but I hope it is simple to read. Um, it's straightforward. It, it does not have any dependencies except uh, you have one header parser for H.264 there, uh, which is only a header file. Um, and the encode is finally working with the final release version. Um, but don't take that for a complete implementation. This is uh, the base for, for education, for other implementations, for experiments. It's, uh, it's working, but uh, it's only tested with NVIDIA cards. Uh, I will, of course, do more in that direction now, but uh, at the moment, yeah. You can use it as a reference. It's online on GitHub. The links are on the slides. Um, 
it's not merged in the engine yet finally uh, so and also encode and decode are not merged together i will do that in the next weeks uh, and also do some explanation files but if you want to look it up check that out and uh, just search for files uh, with video in the in the file name uh, it's one cpp for decode and encode um, so on to wrap it Wrap it, uh, wrap it up as uh, my experience as student, because it's about uh, education here, uh, this uh, talk. Um, I, it was hard to use uh, Vulkan, but it is a good idea to have Vulkan as a base for all courses. You learn it once, uh, you have knowledge in a modern uh, API, um, it's perfect uh, in in the environment of our new university because uh, it's really heterogeneous. So every student has something other like uh, uh, Windows, uh, Linux, uh, Mac OS, Linux on Apple, every crazy combination is there. So um, it's good because Vulkan is working all of them. Um, and you can use your own code, your uh, own knowledge in all follow-up courses and you can visual, visualize AI for NPCs, uh, game physics, all that with your own engine which you did in the first uh, Vulkan course. Uh, and it's perfect because it, it was uh, for my interest in coding math and using new technologies. And I think um, it is really a good base uh, if you want to go academic but especially I think it gives you a head start into also into the industry. Uh, so from I can summarize it. It uh, it really works out to use uh, Vulkan uh, in the curriculum uh, for the whole graphics um, um, courses. Thank you. Do we have any questions? So, uh, oh, oh, I was wondering um, if you saw last year's Vulcanize talks about Just teaching Vulcan. Small part. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, um, is there a particular reason why you teach the graphics pipeline first and then compute? Um, that's that's the question. It uh, computer graphics course. So. And that was kind of uh, obvious to me. <laughs> Do we have any more questions? I think learning the, the uh, computer with that knowledge is not hard because I used it then for the uh, RGB, YCPR uh, conversions in both directions. Uh, yeah. um, is there anything that we as the working group could do to make this easier so i mean we're not going to change the spec to make it easier but like in terms of resources or like yeah what, what could we do to make this easier to pick up i guess or should we be putting more out there well, that's kind of where i'm going well today we talked about really entry-level students who had no knowledge about it that came fresh from from anywhere uh, and for them, I think it's good to have some kind of a, a framework that, that you can look at it, but the framework should be very easy. The framework should not be abstract. Um, and having a lots of samples is good if you are farther ahead. You know, if you, if you really think about, okay, I would want to know this and this, then look into the samples. But for the novices, I think um, it's more to have a, a very concentrated and, and small amount of, of, of software that where you can play around with it so um but i think the the documentations uh the docs uh, um that world Balkan docs i think is a brilliant uh, resource and i will certainly use more of that in the lecture so that is a good that is a good start um thanks for the presentation it was actually really really interesting um even in industry it's hard to find people who know vulcan coming in the door so that's like one of my questions. My first question is, is this just going to be for people going, or are you going to try to make it more of an online course that can be purchased? Um, 
Well, if, if everything is online, then I'm very lonely in my lecture room, probably. <laughs> so that's maybe the only thing. All of the lectures are available as, as video. Okay. If you want them, I can send them to you. So yeah. far, I have been reluctant to put them on YouTube sure. for reasons. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Second question is, 20 years ago when I took my first graphics course, it was focused on ray, ray tracing because it's a lot easier to explain things like the shading and the lighting. And now that ray tracing is coming back and as an accelerated platform, do you think it makes more sense to teach graphics ray tracing first, rasterization second? But that's what we actually do. So Foundations of Computer okay. Science is about ray tracing okay. on the CPU. Good. Yeah. So, yeah. So in the foundations course, uh, you have to develop your own ray tracer uh, in any programming language you want, but it's running on the CPU. Uh, before you do any rasterization stuff, uh, you, you learn ray tracing because you also learn the math with it. We have more than a few questions. I'm going to call it one more. If you have any more questions for the professor and the student, I'm going to ask you to do it offline. I was just going to ask, do you have experience teaching with OpenGL? And how do you feel like students have taken to Vulkan as opposed to OpenGL? Has it been easier in places, harder in places? What's your experience with that? So I used DirectX first before that, DirectX 9, then 10, then 11, and then 12. And it turns out that 12 is something completely different. And, uh, <laughs> and um, we always had this problem of uh, DirectX is, is really glued to Windows. And lots of students have a Mac and some, some have Linux. So I wanted to be more, more multi-platform. And then Vulkan pops up and I say, yes, this is the solution. Um, and um, so, but DirectX was much easier uh, to, to convey. And uh, so there was, was much more time to teach other stuff with real-time computer, uh, with, uh, with rasterization. Now Vulkan is really this big, it churns away other stuff. Uh, and and I try to squeeze in at least uh, at the end more more topics um, that go beyond just just the API, but it's so that's that's the biggest problem probably if for a course that is only doing this. All right, one more round of applause, please. Yeah, sure.